What is up everybody? In today's video we are going to be explaining the coolant routing on the rear wheel drive K24 in my BMW E30. All that in today's episode. My name is Ryan. This is Project Race Car. Let's get into it. So it has been a minute since the last video and uh, since then we have hit 5,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. In the next video, uh, I'll be doing announcing the giveaway and who the winners are. So I'm going to get that all set up and uh, we will get into the actual t-shirt giveaway. So thank you guys so much. We finally hit 5k. I'm so excited for the actual growth of the channel uh, and what we've started with and where we're at now. So thank you guys. We will continue to grow and push and keep just moving along. But thank you guys so much. So I've been working a little bit off camera um, and a lot has happened. But the main focus today is going to be the coolant routing. Um, I had a little bit of a hard time just like wrapping my brain around it. So. Um, it's a little bit different in the E30, so let me show you guys what I've done. Since the last time you guys have seen the car, I was able to get an intake manifold. A subscriber reached out to me and uh, was able to send it over, um, so I got a good discount on that. And uh, we will be doing a separate video uh, getting that and the uh, brake reservoir uh, all set up. So we, that will be in the next video. So one of the uh, biggest issues with the K series in the E30 is that the radiator has one and a half inch diameter, uh, whereas the K series uh, coolant hoses have an inch and a quarter diameter. So you need to get at least one adapter. Um, I was able to just use one. So um, you will need an adapter that goes from one and a half inch to one and a quarter. I will be running heat in my car, so um, the heat routing is a little bit different. Um, if you guys are running heat, then uh, you will be able to uh, do it. I just used one uh, hose that is a 90 degree and then a whole lot of straight. So I'll show you guys. And there will be a barb on the uh, back of the coolant neck. You're going to want to angle it up. Uh, and so I just cut the 90 degree um, just right here and then it 90s off and goes into the barb fitting at the back. So the heater hose comes out from the bottom uh, and then goes into the swivel neck where the thermostat is. I was able to order uh, the S2000 hoses uh, and those do a wonderful job for the rear wheel drive setup. Uh, since the S2000 is rear wheel drive. You can order them uh, just on Amazon and they are relatively inexpensive um, and it makes the routing super easy. The rest of the uh, coolant can be done with the stock uh, E30 hoses. Uh, mine is a 318IS so I'm using the stock 318IS radiator. So the stock S2000 radiator hose is this long kind of bend um, and I was just able to use a uh, adapter to adapt it to the stock E30 hose um, and I just cut a bend into it uh, that way it has a nice 90 degree. You guys can see that um, most of that will get covered with the intake manifold so that is one thing to not worry too much about. From the coolant reservoir, you'll use the stock uh, E30 radiator pipe, and it's a big, long straight, and then comes in to a T, where one half of the T goes down into the plastic uh, portion that's attached to the engine. The other half of the T breaks off and goes uh, to the intake port uh, on the intake manifold. So it will come through and attach to this underneath the intake. I was also able to order this cap uh, for the radiator um, for the second hose on the plastic piece because we have the swivel neck. So I was able to order this cap and it comes with a little plate that holds the cap down uh, so that it won't pop off. And then the final piece of the puzzle is the uh, bottom radiator hose that attached, attaches to the swivel neck and then comes down and does a U shape into the bottom part of the radiator. When uh, I do the fan shroud, uh, I'll make sure to attach 
the coolant hose that way it, it doesn't move at all and hit uh, either the oil pan or the um, belt pulley system so I'll make sure to uh, kind of wrap this up and uh, make sure that it doesn't move too much uh, but I'll attach it to the fan shroud now the uh, coolant system is for sure not as pretty as uh, you know it would be but um, I kind of just worked with what I had uh, and what I was able to um, kind of piece together and it's a tiny bit messy like I said but um, you know it will get the job done uh, and hopefully have no leaks or any cooling issues one other piece that you'll need is on the um, it's a OEM Honda piece um, and it's a fan switch I believe it just plugs up uh, the hole on the swivel neck and uh, and uh, patches that hole so it's uh, it's like seven dollars on Amazon and uh, super cheap nice and easy the biggest piece that I want to do is make sure that none of the uh, hoses touch anything hot uh, touch anything sharp or uh, touch anything that's moving. Um, those are the big three that you need to stay away from um, and so I'm gonna make sure as I go um, that nothing is touching anything hot or moving. Um, so like I said I will need to make a bracket for that um, and keep everything kind of out of the way and uh, moved to its uh, actual location but the more parts that I get the more I'll be able to put on and the more I'll be able to shift everything around. Overall this coolant system is super easy to set up, um, it kind of takes just a lot of piecing everything together. Uh, I was waiting a lot on parts um, just because I didn't know that I needed them until I needed them. So I hope that this routing makes sense uh, and I hope this video makes sense. Um, if you guys have any questions please leave them in the comments down below. I try to respond to every single comment. Finally, if you guys didn't notice, uh, I got the belt system and the last piece of the pulley on. Um, and this is just the idler pulley. I also got this on Amazon. Um, and it's just a adjustable EP3 idler pulley. And it clears the intake manifold. Um, and then it also uh, comes with the belt. Um, I use the 1320 belt. Um, and everything moves and works with it. So that's very good. Okay, from this point, uh, since we have the intake, um, we will be able to uh, get the fuel rail uh, and the fuel injectors all set up, uh, and then we will get uh, AN lines to run the fuel system, um, and then from there, uh, that will be done. We'll need to get the uh, throttle body and the intake set up, and then we will be able to order the exhaust, um, the wiring harness, and then the ECU and then we will be good for a startup we also need a drive shaft but we're gonna worry about that after the first start um, I've been doing some research and looking into what actually fits if you guys know what uh, drive shaft fits a ZF transmission in a uh, E30 please let me know in the comments uh, there's a lot of just like random information so if you guys have any drive shaft solutions uh, please let me know that would be extremely helpful I also need a couple more things of just uh, regular accessories um, like spark plugs all that stuff um, so the E30 is really coming together um, I feel like we are so close to it um, and the coolant system and the belt system getting both of those two things done uh, is actually huge um, now that we have the intake that is another big big step um, so we will just need a little bit more um, and I think that this thing is coming together really really well but that's gonna end it for today's video again if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments down below thank you guys so much for 5k 10k is the next goal um, so maybe we can hit that this year but we'll see uh, until next time, my name is Ryan. This is Project Race Car. Have an amazing day. Peace.